little Steven here. Welcome to the Underground Garage and our exclusive conversation with two of our favorite people, Jeff Beck and Johnny Depp, as we celebrate their new album, 18. <laughs> I beg your indulgence for the next five minutes or so. I must provide a bit of context for these two special gentlemen. There's a rule in show business that uh, the first time an audience finds you, if you're lucky enough for an audience to find you, they define you. And if you're smart, you're pretty much, uh, you pretty much hang on to that identity with both hands as long as you can. These two gentlemen have spent a lifetime breaking that rule, much to our listening and viewing pleasure. <laughs> After a couple of tries of keeping the same band together, Jeff decided every record would be a new adventure. After his groundbreaking work with the Yardbirds, Jeff proved to be a master in multiple genres, from blues to rockabilly, hard rock, jazz fusion, and uh, that includes having instrumental hits, which uh, used to be a regular part uh, of, of the pop charts, but had gone out of fashion for quite a long time until he actually single-handedly brought that back. Uh, beginning with Jeff's Boogie and then the incredible Bex Bolero, the amazing Rice Pudding, and uh, onto Freeway Jam and Star Cycle, etc. Along the way, he became known uh, as not only one of the great guitar players of all time, but a guy you could depend on to turn you on to great singers and great collaborators. Beginning with his first solo band after he left the Yardbirds, which introduced us to a singer named Rod Stewart, the greatest singer any of us had ever heard. Uh, I, I tell the story in, in the book how our bass player came breathless into rehearsal with 16 Magazine or whatever it was before Crawdaddy and Rolling Stone, and he says, look, 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 Rod Stewart is white. <laughs> <laughs> and we said, get the fuck out of here. You know, there's no fucking way he's white. And, and we didn't believe he was white until we saw him live at the Fillmore East. Uh, Jeff introduced us to Ronnie Wood uh, as a phenomenal bass player. And he is phenomenal on those first two albums. We'd never heard of Nicky Hopkins, you know, the great session piano player. And that, he was also in Jeff's first band. And that pattern would continue to this day uh, with Bobby Tench, Max Middleton, John Hammer, uh, narrow to Michael Walden, Jimmy Hall, Imelda May, Joss Stone, John Rhonda Ross. Smith, tell, uh, Anna Ross, yeah. you know, uh, so many, right? We can't we name them all. Rosie Bones, Carmen Vandenberg, way too many to name. But um, so, so, you know, if Jeff ever needs a gig to fall back on, you know, he'd make a great A&R guy, I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> but that brings us to his latest discovery, this new kid named Johnny Depp. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it may seem a, a bit odd at first until you realize uh, that Johnny was a musician before he was an actor, something I would personally recommend for anyone planning on doing both. See what I did there? <laughs> um, uh, once he started acting uh, uh, other than a few uh, pirate movies uh, which he borrowed most of my clothes for uh, his True. roles would be as varied as Jeff's uh, genre jumping expertise from Edward, Sciz Edward Scissorhands to um, Constables and Cops and Sleepy Hollow and Donnie Brasco to various gangsters, demon barbers to Ed Wood uh, my personal favorite and, um, you know, he took us to Wonderland and Chocolate Factories and uh, introduced a whole new generation to the legendary real-life character of characters, Hunter S. Thompson. But lately, he's been revisiting his roots and started the Hollywood Vampires with Alice Cooper and Joe Perry and co-wrote most of their second album, Rise. So he's back into the music, uh, and, uh, and, um, and we are uh, better for it. So, um, so Jeff, let's uh, begin with how did you guys meet and uh, how did that turn into uh, the new album? That was a knock on the uh, dressing room door. <laughs> so we, we got a German lady drummer, so I've picked up her accent. And uh, they said, oh, uh, my guy said that Johnny Depp's here. I went, oh, cool. I knew <coughs> about the pirates. I'd never seen <coughs> the film. <coughs> and uh, I said, yeah, bring him in. Ding. It was... <laughs> We just burst out laughing straight away. You know, so. Like a yeah, it was weird. Brother, when was it? You know, when was it about? Uh, Sixteen. It was. It was in Japan. Tokyo. Yeah. They were. They were giving yeah. Jeff 
uh, an award over there. And, and I needed uh, friendship at that point because we had <laughs> been corralled into doing a horrible show. Over, oh, yeah. The, the, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> there was supposed to be an all-star jam afterwards and G Jimmy Page was supposed to be there with a the guitar and he never even brought a guitar. <laughs> But he brought, <laughs> <laughs> he brought the award. He brought the award. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Japanese were applauding like mad after I finished my three numbers, and they stopped before I walked off the stage <laughs> in horror because where was the jam? Nowhere. That's where. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we, yeah, no I, one yet. So oops. I had to sort of run out of the building. <laughs> <laughs> and I needed his friendship at that point. <laughs> Good timing, eh? I, I literally it was I was there um, in Japan for for the Jeff thing because uh, uh, Joe Perry from Aerosmith um, who, who's also <laughs> Kating. That's what happens when you drop names. You just there's a loud noise. So Joe Joe was there and he asked me to play with him to open up for Jeff. So I said yeah sure of course and went there and then. After our gig, he goes, hey, uh, come on, uh, I want you to meet Jeff. You got to go say, you should meet, you got to meet Jeff back. And I, I said, uh, no, 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 I'm all right. I'm okay. And uh, I'd already met Paige. That was, that was like already doing my head. In. And then they, and then he wants to, me to meet Jeff. And I'm thinking... Listen, it's Jeff Beck. The guy's like a walking mystery. You'd never know what he's going to, you know, which direction he's going to. I mean, he's so unpredictable. And I think he's going to go, fuck's he bringing an actor in here for? <laughs> <laughs> Why's he bringing this actor guy? So I was really, you know, yeah, I was not comfortable, pretty shy to begin with. And so he just, ah, no, come on. So brings me into Jeff's room, shake hands, say hi. Jeff's got a strat on him, uh, strapped to him. And uh, and then we just started sort of, you know, slowly talking. And then within about seven minutes, it turned into just... Howling like laughter. Cackles, you know. <laughs> just, yeah, sophomoric sense of humor. <laughs> that, yeah. And then, and then uh, that's, what, six years ago now, right? About then, yeah. and and then, uh, uh, I mean, for me, it's always great seeing a new Jeff Beck album of any kind because I know you just hate the business with a passion, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So you know, uh, how did that turn into an a co a actual collaboration? Uh, <clears throat> well, Johnny, you you remember the moment where you decided I have to go and and uh, be with Jeffrey. Didn't you? Yeah. Well, there was there there was. <laughs> I um. I left wherever I was, and uh, on an invitation. No, you were you were filming. Uh, you were filming uh, in a, north of London somewhere, and and you got fed up with looking at men with golf pants <laughs> in the lobby of this hotel. <laughs> so I showed up on Jeff's doorstep. You know, he did. Made the way he went, down. He drove straight. The, I saw this stretch limo go right past my house. It's a little. It's a. I've got this little cottage as well as the big house. <laughs> and uh, I went. Oh, he's just missed the entrance. So I went chasing after him. Which makes sense. And he was parked outside my garden, gardener's cottage, with a full Mohican, in the back of this limo with his dark glasses. <laughs> he's going, Where does Jeff Beck live? She said, um, uh, uh, back there. <laughs> well, then, yeah, but then, then suddenly I hear... Oh, yeah, I thought I was doing the coolest thing. And so he pulls up in this silver... It's 50, a 59 Corvette. 59 Corvette. Corvette. And it was probably the worst Corvette. car I could have taken. You hate those, don't you? No, man. Oh. No, no, I love them. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was, that was my first... Uh, that, that was when I basically... Claimed squatters' rights, <laughs> and uh, you, you forgot to tell. I haven't about left the, since it's been six years, and that's I not left where it began. <laughs> it, it, it began when you found out I was staying at this hotel down the road from where you live, in, in, and I came up yeah. to dinner. Yeah, yeah, in, in, yeah. We were in L.A. 
uh, j j after the, j the the thing that happened in Tokyo, and and um, uh, I had Jeff over for 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 dinner, you know. So a bunch of us got together, had dinner. Joe Perry and all that, clang. <laughs> Jeff back, clang. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, really amazing. I just, you know, I and uh, yeah, we ended up playing. A, you know, he ended up playing like a bunch of guitars, yeah. and then we ended up on the uh, ooh, what's it called? Ah, oh, oh, the theremin. He's got this house. Uh, we ended up on a theremin. It's oh. furnished with all forties, nothing later than forties decor, and there's a theremin on a pod standing up there. For about five hours, I was trying to play good vibrations with it. We were like, <laughs> it was it was like two hysterics, infant, tiny drunk toddlers. <laughs> This is exactly what it was like. We're, 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 we're giggling like, like, like you know, s like school kids. Uh, impossible, yeah. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> but we did laugh, yes. And so then I, I'd, I'd, I'd uh, asked him to play on a, one of the tra a rockabilly track on the Vampire's record. Uh, Bushwhackers. Uh, Bushwhackers, yeah. Right. It's a good one. I just found out that's a drink. The bushwhacker is bushwhacker? a, is a, a uh, Alabama drink. Oh, is that what that means? It's yeah, and it got to go to Alabama now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want a bushwhacker. You don't want too many of those. Let me probably tell you. not. No. <laughs> but yeah. So uh, he and and unbelievably, he played. You know this. You know, because he's the king. He, I mean, his rockabilly chops are insane. Yeah. It's amazing. So we did that, and then I sent him a, another track that I'd, that I'd uh, been working on, uh, this thing, Hedy Lamar, And uh, I text, I text, I sent it to him, at, with, but with the, I sent it to him like this. Hi, Jeff, it's Johnny. Um, hey, this is, a, this is a new song that I've been working on, and uh, don't think that I'm asking you to play on this, <laughs> because I'm certainly not. I would never do that to you. And uh, even though I think it's a very good song and you'd sound amazing on it, uh, I, I don't, don't you, you don't have to worry about that. I'm not, that, I'm not going that way. Don't, I wouldn't do that to our friendship. But if you feel like playing on it. <laughs> so the next text that came back was, send me the stems. <laughs> That's the one you want to hear. That's the one yeah. you want. Yeah, and then he sent back this, this, uh, you know, this transcendental solo, this thing that just sends you out into the, uh, the stratosphere. So um, I was very lucky already at that point. And then um, we just, yeah, we'd, we just kept laughing and coming up with ideas. Yeah. So, so it started to become... Send me another one, or you know, or, or you just well, send him another one. And I made the mistake of, of saying, "Do you want to do a blues album?" And he went, "No, <laughs> no, anything but blues." You said no. I, I he, love the blues. I thought, oh dear, I, I, I can't I'm just trotting it. What, 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 what am I going to do with the blues, man? That somebody <laughs> yeah, else ain't I, done. I understand. Like, you know, it was a metaphor for a, you know a, a more wider you know genre to album. Right. It's just a saying. Do you want to make a blues album? You know. Yeah, he, was, he took it the wrong way. He just, no, he was, but he was like, <clears throat> he was look, you know, he was because he was listening to things that were outside, you know, really outside. He's listening to everything, and both of us were listening to, you know, everything from, you know, like really obscure stuff like Napoleon Strickland, Key to the Bushes, and and then we'd be listening to. Um, Bauhaus, or we'd be listening to uh, uh, Killing Joke, or De then, you know, <laughs> De Antwoord. So we really explored a lot of just, you know, having kept our ears to the ground a bit. Um, just, just tried to sort of uh, create something <clears throat> that was, yeah, I had a different approach, I suppose, especially for for, you know. Jeff's, it was a very unexpected record, I think. Um, it started with uh, Jeff, you know. Down in your French house. Yeah. When Johnny was a late riser. <coughs> yes. 
you know, and I thought, let's yeah. take, steal this drum kit from out of the office. He had a little sort of office where he worked, but the drum kit was penned in this little alcove. Four of them stole it. I didn't wake up once. <laughs> so we dragged the kit from there to the main house just to see if it sounded, you know, you know, use the room sound. And it sounded like a Motown drum sound, which is, the, you know, the holy grail of drum sounds. Mm. And I laid down a track with my engineer guy who, when he heard about Johnny, he came down there about 400 miles an hour. Um, <laughs> so keen was he to get there. And um, I said, put on uh, Ooh Baby by uh, Miracles. And I played along the drum part. And we, we um, made it, we tricked it up a bit because I was a bit out of time, but the sound was pretty good. And I put the bass on and then the rhythm guitar <clears throat> and then just a little solo. And then he came in and went, what the fucking hell is this? <laughs> I just woke start- <coughs> and I, I, I just I, woken up and I walked in with two bottles of rosé and ice, <laughs> south of France so and everything. Great. And he goes, check this out. Bang. And it was, you know. It was the ba- bare was, bones of the track. It was the, it was the, yeah, the basis of the, so of, then the of the track. I had, I was, I felt, I don't know why, I felt really sleepy and I, went to the bedroom next door to the studio. I woke up and he was doing three-part harmonies to it. I couldn't believe it. I just thought, this is amazing. <coughs> you picked out the three-part. And I thought, he said, You're, I'm ready for you now. I said, no, no, you're going to sing now. If you can sing the backup yeah, as man. good as you did, you do the lead in falsetto. And he went white and then punched me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, he just went, oh, you did that. I said, yeah. I'm thinking. I think he hated I'm, me for about three I'm, months. After. I'm in trouble. I've done. I've, put, I've put him like this because like, I thought I put this layer. I'll just like layer this little like a little carpet, you know, underneath the instrumental that we're about to do with Smokey Robinson and the Miracles. Ooh, baby, baby. So I threw these three-part harmonies in. He hears them. Comes in the room. He says, "What's that? Is that who's that? Is that you?" I said, "Yeah." And I'm thinking, I'm going to get kicked out of my own house now. <laughs> and uh, he says, oh, well, you can sing it then. I'll see you later. No, I, I nearly he sp- burst in because split. it was so good. And um, I think Ben turned around and said, stay out, you know, while he's, you know, he might get a little bit twitched. Which if yeah, he might, you might find him in a fetal position, well, weeping <laughs> soon. And uh, I think you denied all involvement in it until somebody said, who's that singing? And then and they liked it. So tell them about the, the Smokey Robinson. Oh, that God. He heard it, oh, apparently. Oh, God, man. And he, he left, his, left his number to, you know, to call, you know, to say you know, he really dug the version. This is so he wouldn't, he this, wouldn't yeah, call. Yeah, this is so outside, man. <laughs> he, this he would, is so outside. <laughs> So <laughs> we were sitting on this couch in my little house, and it, I said, come on, now's the moment. You had a couple of drinks. You call Smokey and see what he says about the track. And he yeah. wouldn't do it. So finally, finally, sure. after about three months. Hi, Smokey. What do you think? He goes, OK. <laughs> so I dialed it and handed them the phone. <laughs> and he leant forward, and, and I started pounding him on the back with my fist. And he was going, no, your my feet? number... He was it's 310. Me. <laughs> uh, hello, it's just As I'm it's leaving Johnny this Depp. <laughs> hello, man. No wonder he never called us back. Jeff's kicking me in the back. Like, off, you, <laughs> you <laughs> drunken <laughs> bastard. And uh, we never heard from him. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Smokey. I'm, I'm terribly it sorry. It was my fault. That's what I'm hoping. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that, then well, it started up other stuff, and then... Uh, we we sort of got into two different channels. There was that, that I can't say the name of the track because it's got a horrible word in it. Ah, and that was exciting as hell doing that like weird stuff. But then it, it didn't follow that line. We went on to something else. I forget. Yeah, that that there was there was this. I think we can say it. It's a bad word. It's a foul mm. word. It's not that foul. Uh, it's my station. We can do whatever the fuck we want. Well, there you go. <laughs> so there was, there was, there was something that I that I had kind of been messing with, you know, recording, but like, like twenty years earlier, like when when my mm. my I was 
tour daddy on uh, my girl Vanessa was on tour and our our baby was you know Lily Rose was like a year old or something so I was just being tour daddy you know taking care of the kid and everything and then I would mess around with these weird programs on the computer so I came up with this very strange groove when Lily Rose was like one years old and then I just did what I could do with it and I thought I don't know what this is ever going to be, you know. Mm. So 20 something 23 years later I I I play it for Jeff and he goes, "Oh yeah, that sounds like something I might <laughs> like to take a bite of because it's just it's an odd it's, it's an odd song. The album itself is quite eclectic. We, we, mm. we wouldn't you agree? I mean, yeah. I mean it's sort of like it's it's like it's a mess, let's face it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I think but Jeff, it's a <laughs> Jeff put it really well. I, uh, uh, I wish I could have said that. In fact, I'll say it now. Jeff, Jeff said, because I said to him, no, nah, it's not true. Jeff said, <laughs> it's it's kind of like if Johnny and I were were searching a, a you know wandering through a record store, you know together, like at the age of eighteen or whatever, you know, like just. Grab this, grab that, you know. So you're going in every, uh, all kinds of strange directions. Hence the title. Yeah. yeah. Right. We had, we had other titles, and they they just didn't stick, you know. When you get an album title, everything sounds crap, you know. And it's like Led Zeppelin when I first heard that. I went, oh dear, that's a, not a good idea. But then it. Pe- <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Yeah. That goes your A and R job. You yeah, lost it. Oh they stuck with it. They stuck with it, and uh, now you know it yeah. forges itself after that. That's but, right. That's you know, choosing track titles unless they're a cover, you know, it's pretty difficult not to come up with something embarrassing. <laughs> and that's how it went, really. I mean, day to day, just whatever mood you're in, yeah, or whatever, right? I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was if we, if we were in. If Jeff was I was in just the UK. a bit worried about making another hopeless failure. You know, <laughs> I never knew who my. I that's knew. why he brought in a hopeless failure. <laughs> <to this. laughs> well, I figured it would work against the. Uh, you get the right? picture, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, uh, when you you've got th- someone that you just lock in with, you know, the humor. That's the thing, really. It's just that. That's the gasoline, really, for sure, in your sure. engine. And, uh, but was well, it a conscious decision to? I mean, you ended up producing it yourselves, right? Right. I mean, you know, yeah. well, which already is a, a sort of. I, I, I was listening to a lot of Motown, and I was trying to decipher what magic there was, and you know, how did they get yeah. that unity of sound, and still have the the punch of almost live energy on it. Oh, no. And when you any record played in a, in a disco at the, in the 60s, people were just going nuts, you know, dancing in the street. That came on, you're jumping in the air straight away. Yeah. And it was real players. And now yeah. there's nothing like that. James left, James. You know. So I was determined to at least salute the, the Motown, you know, a couple of those tracks. And uh, yeah. yeah, you uh, also did uh, Marvin Gaye. What's Gage. going on? Yeah, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, yeah which is great, you know. Another song that I never <coughs> ever thought my voice would be they, anywhere near. Yeah. <laughs> the challenge you're taking it was a, a serious very challenges dangerous. here. You it's know, a Jackie Robinson and Marvin. That was the if thinnest you're piece. Jump in, you may as well get <coughs> seriously wet. You know, you and know. John Lennon, by the way. And sink if you have to. I mean, if you're going to sink, just that, sink. Uh, what's so. going on with the thinnest piece of ice I've ever walked on? I think. <laughs> It, Marvin, you know, that, that was his bass, song that, forever. And James Jameson's bass oh, line. And, I mean. No, I was not going to let that go. I, I had to have a go at that. Uh, but it was. We made a sort of a composite of different parts of what's going on album. So it, the, the track jumps onto another part of the. Was it? And the, right. Where he just goes into another mode. But it was just much. When, when you've got a play, player like Pino Palladino was able to do exactly. We didn't steal anything off Motown, only just Jameson's bass line. But, but we, we had the original stem, but we didn't use it. It was, James, it was uh, Pino Palladino played it. Wow. At least it I think it was him. 
He may be, maybe have sent us the stem of Jameson back and said, this is me. <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. Well, it was suspicious he never charged me. I thought, <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> bastard. What, um, I mean, the, 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 the breadth, of, I mean, it, it feels like almost like a best of uh, album in that sense of, of, you know, something from this album, something from that album, you know. And it shows, it just shows again your breadth as well. I mean, you know, you're going from the most beautiful, uh, the opening track. Uh, on that walker, you know, midnight walk, just, yeah, you know, which is yeah. beautiful. I mean, he beca he he, the guitar becomes the illin pipe, you know, right? Just this right. The, the, that right. that sound. I I was um, if I move to the point of you know, gut, then I have to have it. I have to have that. If it's possible to interpret that feeling on the guitar, then I try uh. to do it. And the illin pipe is because it's single note. It's like a sax, you know. You, you know, you you got your jazz players and all that, but this guy, Davis Belan, he's haunted me, and I've covered a couple of his other songs, and he rang me once from a pub in Dublin somewhere. I heard the version you did, of a, <laughs> and he, I got more rock and roll songs as well. He said I play rock and roll. I said don't want rock and roll. I want you to you know just. He said all right, I'll write you one that cuts deeper. <laughs> and uh, he it did. So he wrote that for you? No, no, oh. it was just one that he had. But he... I was going to say, that's uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah. And then, and then you go to the, you know, the incredible uh, Venus and Furs. Uh, yeah, Venus and Furs. Great, 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 great idea. Just You've been a Lou, Lou Reed fan, obviously. Huh? Oh yeah, sure, yeah. absolutely, a, a Velvet Underground yeah. fan, and and just as it. As we started to do these these things, like you know, like a, a, a Lenin a Lenin bit, you know, um, just because s s simply because it because I mean they're they they're so brilliant and you and the, there is a great challenge, you know. So the challenge is the is the fun bit. Um, it's the fun bit that might not end up to be so fun, but I, th I think it worked out. Well, I mean, but that was a good, that was a perfect part. example of, a, of a, taking a cover and, and really making it your own, I, I, you know, isolation, yeah, we're talking isolation, about. Isolation, yeah. You know, yeah, thanks. just the, the back and forth. Uh, uh, <laughs> have, you, have you guys heard the new album, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. You better. Yeah. 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 You're sitting there. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, Why don't we play it now? Then you'll all be aware of it. <laughs> we will. We'll, we'll throw in some music when you when you hear this on the radio. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I mean, the, I mean the the back and forth, you know, conversation between you two in the beginning, you know, mm. that really takes it. Now, now you've moved it away from the original, quite considerably, you know, and Which then, and then it just builds and builds and builds from there. Hard you know? to do. Yes, yeah, yeah, but Len that is the challenge. It's so ingrained in your, in your mind, you know. Yeah, in Lennon. But, but that's the trick, you know. The, the the trick with covers is, you know, you got to make it your own somehow. Yeah. And uh, it's just, you know, it's either it's either change the gender, you know, change the genre, right. Change the tempo, you know, change right. the style, you, you know, something. Yeah. That that you know just gives it a little bit of, okay, I'm hearing something new now, you know. Yeah, and that's just a great example of it. When I think. Just, yeah, when you f find it, and it was, it, it was a. Ve I mean, it was a very laid back process, you know. Um, that j when Jeff and I sort of <coughs> were kind of going through what we were going to record and what we wouldn't, because it, it would just kind of come like we'd start playing some song just on the guitar. Meanwhile, again, I'm thinking instrumental, and then, you know, then the next day we're going to cut it, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, and then it's done, you know, it, uh, either instrumental or, or, or with vocal. We, it was, it was a super organic um, process, you know. Sometimes, sometimes we'd. Uh, I don't know, we'd go in and do a couple of overdubs, you know, Jeff, Jeff would, or Jeff would go in and do a solo, 
And then we'd stop for a few hours, and then I would do background vocals all night or something. And mm. So it was really uh, at our own leisure, really. And that was really nice to not have anyone kind of tapping you on the shoulder yeah. going, hey, what do you got? Yeah, mm. yeah. So this is all in, in, the, in your studio in, in France? It's done all over the place, wasn't it? Oh. Yeah, we were... Yeah, Wherever it was, you happen to be. Je France, Jeff's in Los Angeles and... Uh, yeah, Jeff's L.A. and, and in my in kitchen, France. In your kitchen? You no, it was a sewing room, actually. A kitchen, a sewing room. I had to get all the balls of wool oh, out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Recorded on an island. Because <laughs> you can be very loud on an island. Hardly. Shall I tell them about you uh, trying to lock up the, the click track down on the island? Oh so, you're, so you're engineering also? You're also engineering? Well, we didn't, uh, you know, it, there were <laughs> this is how organic it was. There, there were times when it was just Jeff and I. Um, and so I don't really know, how, I'm not good with computers. I don't know how to run all those things. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Jeff is. Oh, how are you doing? Jeff is. He's just like my pipe. He might be just a bit better than me <laughs> with computers. No, I can't do nothing. Like no, he can't. He's as no. bad as I am. So, <laughs> so, essentially, we'd the end up hitting. We'd end up hitting re just. Oh, that's the red button. Record <laughs> for each other. So I'd like hit record, and then Jeff would play some. You know, like some shocking thing that <laughs> came out of Mozart's head, <laughs> and I'm recording it, going, and then you know, I, I was, hope this thing's on. I was I was reduced. It wasn't. Well, I kept watching the <laughs> watching the music go <laughs> across the screen, so I thought I got it, I got it. <laughs> but it ended up the things that he would play, because every every take of the solo or a or whatever was different it was it was a different feel it was a different this it was a different note so he'd really fly around and so essentially by the time i hit stop on record i was cackling like a three-year-old because i'm watching jeff play this stuff going i'll never in my <coughs> life be ab able to play that <coughs> and it Sorry. made me happy <laughs> <laughs> what about it was this, less responsibility this, the second solo on the isolation I'd finished, I'd got to the peak of the thing and Robert started horse whipping me to carry on <laughs> so you could hear the uh, sudden acceleration halfway through this <laughs> he's going, come on, keep going <laughs> so I left it as it was crazy man that's, that's good. great it was such fun, it was really such fun that solo was spectacular at the end uh, so, and, and in the end, and, and did you manage to mix it yourself? Did you have somebody mix it? Or, or? We had a, a um, our, our kind of engineer, main engineer, Robert. Yeah. Um, Stevenson. He was a great help. And, uh, yeah. And he was available at all hours of the night, which was very good. It's essential. Huh? Um, so he, 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 yeah, he pretty much did the mix. We had another then, friend. Uh, Bobby, Bobby who, who did um, Death and Resurrection. Mm. I loved that. I, mean, uh, I thought it was the coolest thing with yeah. the bass. Um, yeah. A lot of diff different um, energy went into that record. Different. Where'd you find that one? Death and Resurrection. That it, was his fault. It was, a, <laughs> it was a song. Um, amazingly, it was a song that was released in 1980 by a band called Killing Joke, who, oh. who were... Didn't you play it to him and he laughed? Huh? He played it to him and he laughed. I went, nice, thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, I mean, it's so, it's such an intense song. It was a really important song for me, like, after I'd uh, had my little stint with, um, uh, yeah, kind of a interesting addiction to uh, painkillers. And coming off of those, you know, kicking the kicking the um, uh, opiates, 
I, I remember sitting in a chair, I remember sitting in a chair, um, this chair for about five days, listening to Death and Resurrection show on a loop. And I just sat there sort of holding on, you know, like. Wow. And, 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 and uh, there's something about that song that's very, very, yeah, I don't know. It's the about personal, most, powerful. Yeah. It is. It's it, those climbing chords are about as heavy as they yeah. have, you could ever get. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, that was great that we that we ended up doing that one. At least for me, it it feels like a, a cleanse. Yes, I arrived at the place where I could actually play the song and not just have to listen to it <laughs> gripping a metal chair. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let me see here. Let me yes, see. the gripping of the metal chair is never good. The the, the Wilson brothers uh, show up a couple times, right? Who? Yes. Yeah, so Dennis Wilson, well, Brian Wilson. Dennis yeah, Brian. I, you did the tour with them? Well, right? this this was the project was basically a Jeff Beck album, you know, the third album on, on the re record deal that we had. So I had to think, what am I going to do? You know, I can't write a better song than, than um, Caroline No which bored its way into my bones when I heard it. <laughs> and so did um, Don't Talk. Um, I actually recorded Don't Talk about 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. Just demoed it and never did anything with it. Um, for one reason or another, I lost contact with a with guy that was recording it. I just, it was on a, um, a, what do you call those um, mini disc things? Is that, well, Tiak. It was a Tiak 8. Those old Tiak That's how long eight, ago yeah, it was. Yeah. You know, so much dust on the machine, I don't think you could play it anymore. But um, I just thought, you know, why not draw attention, draw people's attention to that amazing, those amazing songs on that other most amazing album. You know, I wasn't prepared for it. I just bought this really top stereo, proper transcription unit um, with a couple of leak speakers and I, my hearing was really, not, you know, top. And I put the needle on and I just was transfixed for the whole afternoon with that album. Just, you know, I'm sure everybody was when they first heard it. And it doesn't leave you, you know, when you hear all that energy, there's different textures that Brian Wilson put in there. So how long it was you, time to do those, pardon? How long did you, did you tour together? Uh, four or five weeks. Well, should we, have, uh, we should have some questions from the uh, audience, He doesn't seem to need anything or want anything. Suzette Smith, are you here somewhere? You out there? Oh, yeah, there's 3,000 people out there. <laughs> I do. You, I can see. We've That's been amazing. fitted up, John. It's incredible. How, <laughs> look, they're even on the wall out there. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a giant baseball. <laughs> America's amazing, isn't it? Suzette, yes. <laughs> Suzette asks, what has been the best part being back on tour in Europe and the U.S. Jeff very simply and kindly, and his, uh, Jeff and his wife, Sandra, just took me in uh, to their house, and I lived with them for months and months and months. And then we went on the first tour together. And so for me, having had to deal with other things at the same time, time once those things you know are down the road and you drop into the tour well you you it's like your home your home and you and you feel uh, at home um I, like I where i can actually be vegetarian me. food was it that time but i looked in the bin once and there was a mcdonald's wrapper where did that come from? <laughs> I'd had that in my back pocket for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cheeseburger. <laughs> no, I wondered where he got it. We lived 50 miles from the nearest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I was so yeah. Jeff, Jeff, Jeff's welcome into this, into this incredible situation. I mean, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm still completely. I'm, 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 you know, I'm. I'm, I'm flabbergasted by it. It makes no sense whatsoever, but somehow when we're together it makes sense. Well, that's the thing, I think, you know, both careers 
make no sense. No. You know, but... My career but never made any sense. They do. But they Everything do. Makes sense. <laughs> but if but somehow can, they do. <laughs> if you can laugh most of the day, you, you, you're on a good, good yeah. streak. You yeah, know? man. That's, yes. that's you the make thing. fun of anything. That's what I mean. I, I think you managed to those, avoid the, the, <coughs> the business part of it. We did. It got you a know. bit strong when, when I bought those propeller hats. That's when I was... <laughs> <laughs> Man, that that that's that's. I think it's our goal actually, to perform in multicolored propeller hats, <laughs> and then be whisked off the stage by the propeller hat. Yeah, that's it. I, just <laughs> I know I'm adding more budget to the tour, but it could be worth it. It could be worth it. Imagine well, those t-shirts. Well, if you want that to happen, I'll make it happen. <laughs> would we pay extra for that? Yes, we would. <laughs> Damn right we would. Jeff Beck levitating in a Where's propeller hat. A multicolored propeller hat. <laughs> it's a whole new... Who wouldn't follow that? I will. I no, and Jeff, I know you, you know, like most of us, I mean, the business part of the business, you know, just can sometimes uh, alienate you to the point where you just don't want to be bothered, you know. But then you go yeah. out on stage... You know, and, and you find your way on stage somehow, <laughs> right? And suddenly, you know, you get the reason why, what it's all yeah. about, right? Exactly. I, I mean, uh, yeah, I, so I was struggling for a, a while. I mean, the, the, obviously the COVID thing was not helping, but yeah. not playing was the worst thing, you know, because I need to be playing all the time. There's no, yeah. if I cheat and have a, a week off, I, I suffer, you know, but th we're talking two and a half years. And I'm just about pulling my style back together, you know, because uh. you don't, you can't do what I do unless you do that. And as a um, yeah. Django Reinhardt said, uh, if I don't practice, uh, if I miss a day's practice, I can tell. If I miss two days, my friends can tell. If I miss three days, the whole damn world can tell. <laughs> and that's that's wow. yeah, I always lock that in. And wow. if wow. you if you cheat, you're going to pay for it. And so it's, you, don't I mean, walk on stage and you think you, you've got it locked in here. Maybe, but your fingers ain't going to do what your brain <laughs> is telling you to do. So, and, uh, so uh, far, we've got a catalogue of mistakes on YouTube. <laughs> and I'm terribly sorry, but I, I will I'll, I'll iron out the wrinkles. <laughs> <coughs> so, so it's not just practicing, it's actually playing uh, in front yeah, of the you audience. Yeah, you cannot simulate at, in your house, really, right? And that's even if you play along to a live, you know, thing, right? It's still not that obligation to deliver in front of people. Uh. You know? From that minute, you are committing yourself to the stage. Something happens, yeah. you, you know, crackle happens. You know, what's that? Something goes wrong. You know, you, people they don't realize <laughs> what we go to. <laughs> no one understands. And they take fifty percent tax off us. <laughs> uh, 45, all right, love. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, I love That's a bit greedy, and let's face it, anybody, you know, shouldn't have that much tax. Where's the incentive? Let's get on to that. Let's get, let's get on proper stuff. <laughs> well, you may not feel like you're quite in shape yet, but I, uh, got, I, I, got, I got some news from the most mortal guitar players. <laughs> I mean, exactly. I told him last time I saw him, like, like what's most irritating is. Your fucking precision. He never misses what he goes for. Oh, I never, do. Yeah. never. Well, you cover it up well anyway. <laughs> now there's like, some shocking ones going on. He goes for the there, craziest <laughs> notes in the world and he just always hits them exactly right. You know? That's the thing. That, when that, I was hitting the red button and he would suddenly <laughs> go into this, like, <laughs> you know, he's, he, he's, he's slicing through planets <laughs> with his guitar playing. And I'm like, that's a good way to put it. Ridiculous, man. I thought you were talking about me for a minute. <laughs> I, I don't am. Know. It's, just, it's, a, it's a definite form of, a, of um, some brain disorder, what I've got. So. Well, welcome it. Yeah, yeah. There's something to that, actually. Uh, this one we kind of answered a, a, a bit. Um, Jamie Lynn Ryan. That's not the Jamie Lynn I know, is it? No. Jamie no, Lynn, there you are. Hi. <laughs> Jamie Lynn. Um, what was the process for selecting the, the, the sequence of songs, the, the, the list of songs? 
um, included on 18, and, and how did you go about crafting the arrangements? Hmm. <laughs> it, we, we did punch each other in the face a few times about the running order, didn't we? That was more of a, just a little it slap. Was, how do you get these disparate tracks to flow properly? It, it's right. not... Because as you at said, one point, we just threw p pieces of paper in a hat and just juggled them. And, uh, and the actual choice of the songs? Um, well... Didn't come out of the hat. It was... I put the hat on. <laughs> <laughs> no. Were you, picking from, were you picking whatever it is, 12 from 20 or 12 from 30? Or, uh, or we 12 had about 12? 21 songs, I yeah. think. The, yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a bunch of songs that we... There's, that we Recorded um, Forever didn't, Young didn't was, on was the record, yeah. really amazing. That was a nice track. Um, um, what else was there? Oh, there's, yeah, there's some stuff that we wrote that we wrote that's on the that we didn't uh, put on the record. There's yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of I mean, there's a bunch of interesting stuff. We just <coughs> like again, it's me and Jeff in a record store, kind of going, oh, I really like this record. Let's do something off of Pet Sounds, you know, you know. And you may have you may have half of half of a of a part two, maybe yeah. half of a half of a, 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 a second. I don't know. I think probably we would jump in some deep end somewhere and start something else. Unless you know. I think. I mean, I think there's some stuff that we did that's that was a little. We have to see how this yeah, goes. You know, people need to point us in the direct. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, no, they don't need to do that. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I mean, the really wouldn't know where we're going. <laughs> but I mean, there's always that you know the evolution of, of the relationship's going to, you know, you never know where that's going to go, right? Well, we, we, the, exactly. there was a clue that we were on the right track in Europe, wasn't it? They, there's a great big section of girls who, who screamed and deafened me when he came on. <laughs> <laughs> but they were listening to what I was playing, and they were st they were all of one accord. That was what the, the best thing about the European tour. There were a, a kind of uh, total Johnny fans of mine, and they they were enjoying this whole thing. No, it, was a it worked it was really a, well. It I was thought. a nice combination of yeah. people. I, also, I mean, if 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 there are, if if there are those who 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 have not properly been turned on to Jeff's. Earlier stuff. I mean, the, the, these. I mean, there are far too many masterpieces to speak of. You know, because we've ended as lovers, or I mean, endless. Um, if they had so heckled, I'd have been out there. It's Don't nice worry, to, I'd have taken care of that. <laughs> it's, 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 it's nice to be able to remind these people, like, hey, Jimi Hendrix wouldn't have played the same way if it hadn't been for that guy. I mean, th I mean that's a really strange concept to, 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 to you know, put into your head. And Jimmy and, paid a tribute know. to Jeff, uh, a bit of rice pudding. He did. Oh, uh, that's, that is, that is, I, I can die happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I know that he played of, uh, that. Remember which song, Maury? Freedom or... From, from, from the cry of love, yeah. the, the last album oh, that Jimmy yeah. did before he died. There's not one single photo of me and Jimmy in this planet. Uh, There's not one single photo of us together. Unless somebody's out there has got one. They however, happen. there are awesome stories. There's, just, <laughs> there there, there's one picture which was taken with me on bass, off out of the shot, and Ronnie Wood <laughs> is peering behind a, a screen. So I know I was playing bass, because why was he behind the screen? He was looking around. And Jimmy's there with my Les Paul upside down. So I know that I was on stage, you know. But why did the guy only take him? <laughs> <He left. laughs> no, I know I'm ugly, but, you know, there's a limit. Isn't there? <laughs> Amazing. Well, anyway, I think, you know, by the end of this tour, you know, you're going to have people coming up and they're going to say, wait a minute. I didn't know he was an actor. You know, I thought he was a Jeff. That's that's, that, yeah. yes. no, that's the thing. Sixteen <laughs> right? years old. He you had you, a Telecaster with a custom pickup on it, and uh, Jack Sparrow was a million miles away, wasn't he? 
yeah, a billion and, miles As away. was Edward Scissorhands. Yeah, no. I can't believe it when he, at his house, he handed me this jangling mass of scissors and, and I got a, a leather gauntlet. I thought, put the scissor, I hadn't seen the film. I put like, the scissor hands on This him. guy is in serious trouble. <laughs> he had the, Strapped him into them. The, and why I mean, would he, he make like, this? Imagine how I found use out. Use it as a bottle, right? Use it as a bottle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a, picture of, there's a picture of me playing a telecaster with these scissors. <laughs> we need that. that we need, that's the cover of the next one. We do have yeah. a photo of that. That's yeah. Right. That was that's a fun night. <laughs> that and the uh, theremin. I, I never awesome. got over it. I mean, that anyway, was we... Um, such a great experience. I mean, I, I've already... I mean, there's no reason that I should be here. The audience all. is dwindling. You there's keep no, saying that. But no, but... <laughs> It's but Jeff, the, 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 Beck, the, there's no reason in the yeah, world There's no why. reason in the world anymore, is there? There's no logic to this world. No, certainly not. No. So we're going to make our own. That's why we got into the business in the first place, man. We didn't fit into what, what, what they were telling us, <laughs> right? We had That's to make our own sure. fucking world. That no, is for sure. Disobedience but was I mean, my middle name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, baby. So it's great. It's working great. I can tell you that objectively. Thank you, thank right? you brother. From thank outside you. The, the picture here. I it's would contradict kind. at the earliest opportunity just, just to <laughs> get some uh, reaction. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going great. I think uh, yeah, keep doing things, you know. It's going to see where it evolves to, man. I, you hope, know? I hope so. He may fire yeah. me any second now. <laughs> um, just just like, keep in line, okay? Which is okay. Yes, <laughs> boss, I will. No problem, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did he say? <laughs> boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that. What did you want, master? This time, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, God, on that note, before it gets too ugly, <laughs> no, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you out there. Thank Jeff and Johnny. Thank you so much, go, uh, go, go buy the new album. It's called Eighteen because that's how old they are mentally. <laughs> That's right. And, At best. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. You're going to love it. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.